God, our Father David Mikowitz, the intentions for the Mass will be in special intentions. Good morning. Our gathering hymn is number 552, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 552. Please stand. We'll begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Entering mysteries of dying and rising, let us ask God for the forgiveness of our sins, that we might be worthy to offer sacrifice and praise. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. To God in the highest, pure peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone, <coughs> you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, pick out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will God be slow to answer them? I tell you, God will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord.
A pastor in Montreal visited a parishioner in the hospital. She was in the final stages of a terrible disease and was dying. She was agitated and uncomfortable. The pastor sat by her parishioner, held her hand, and began to read from the Bible. The Lord is my light. But before she could finish the phrase, the patient did. And my salvation, whom should I fear? The young minister began to read other passages of Scripture to give this woman some comfort. And each time, the parishioner took over the passage, except that the patient wasn't reading. The sacred Scripture was a part of her very being as she breathed the Word of God in and out with her minister. The woman eventually began to settle down and rest in the embrace of God. This past Tuesday, the 11th of October, was the 60th anniversary of the opening session of the Second Ecumenical Council of the Vatican in 1962. And one of the most important documents was the dogmatic constitution on the Word of God. See, Jews and Christians believe our God is a personal God, a God who has spoken and continues to speak to humanity through a living word that is transmitted within a living community of faith. Through the sacred scripture, God speaks to us as friends and thus engages us in a dialogue in which we are invited not only to listen to God's Word, but also to engage with God's Word and respond to that Word. Now, having said that, there are two aspects of sacred Scripture that we need to truly understand. And the first is that the meaning of Scripture is not always immediate or easily understood. Thus, the need for biblical scholarship and for accessible commentaries for all of us. And second, the Bible does not provide detailed instruction for every contemporary human situation. For example, the Bible does not directly address today's issues of climate change and the environment, nuclear war, bioethical issues, women, and gender. Thus, not only are we invited to dialogue with God's Word, but at times to struggle with God's Word as Jacob struggled throughout the night with that divine being. Each generation of Christians must, within our lived context, listen afresh to the living Word of God. Through prayer, dialogue, and listening, the hallmarks of Pope Francis's pontificate to ascertain with the guidance of the Spirit what God is saying to the church. Thus, we are to reappropriate and re-express what God is saying to us so as to apply the word to addressing new problems in human situations. We see this maturing development in the church's understanding of war and capital punishment as through Francis, more and more we keep moving to simply saying war and capital punishment are immoral and there is no reason either, period. The just war theory of St. Augustine in the fourth century no longer holds any authority. Not when a person can push a button and destroy whole cities and tens of thousands of people at once. Augustine was speaking in a period where it was still arm-to-arm -arm battle. And probably 100 guys? We see this also in the present argumentation within the church over issues of gender and sexual orientation. 
liturgy, women, and authority. In the end, which is not always clear at the time to a particular generation of Christians, there is a certain clarity that arises within the community as we surrender to what is given over to us by the Word of God. And this is what Paul is trying to convey to the young leader, Timothy. But what is said to Timothy is meant for all Christians since sacred scripture is an essential component of the Christian's life of faith. The Word of God is the support and energy of the church, strengthens our faith, and is food for the soul. The Council therefore equates the veneration of the presence of Christ within the sacred word with the veneration of the Lord's body. Christ is equally present in word as well as in sacrament. Therefore, the most important aspect of this document is that it urges all Christians to enter into a frequent reading of the Scriptures. And why? The Council quotes St. Jerome, Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. Without reading and meditating and praying with the Bible, you cannot know Jesus Christ. Thus, when reading, praying with, meditating on, struggling with, pondering the Word of God, whether individually or in a gathering such as this, this sacred act is to always be accompanied with prayer so that we can walk together with God. Does your prayer life include reading and meditating on the Bible? If not, or maybe it's been a long time, I would strongly encourage all of us to have a Bible by our bedside, near our favorite chair, place in the house that we frequent. And I'm going to give you homework. When you go home today, now if you don't have a Bible home, you can get one by Amazon Prime by tomorrow morning, I expect. (laughs) And don't feel ashamed about that. If it's got an inch of dust on it, dust it off. Seek out the Bible. And I'm going to ask all of us here to either randomly or purposefully choose a psalm. Go to the book of Psalms. These wonderful songs seem to address almost every human emotion, and give us words to speak to God, this dialogue between friends. And if a psalm is very long, like 119, take part of it. But choose a psalm and pray with it for a few days, if not a week, before moving on to another psalm. Pray the words slowly. Let the words soak into your soul like rain soaks into the earth. Be attentive to your feelings, to the images that rise up within you, to the personal family situations that may come to mind. And for those of you who are comfortable journeying, write those things down. Every single day, write down what your feelings were, your images... Let the poetry, these words of praise, sometimes of frustration and anger, other times of hope and joy that are found in the Psalms, speak within you and then silently enter into listening. It's a dialogue. We speak to God. God speaks to us. But you can't hear God if we don't shut up. We're really good at doing our part of the dialogue, aren't we? But we live in a culture where we are petrified of silence. 
But silence is absolutely necessary for the spiritual life and for prayer. So again, go home, choose a psalm. Slowly pray it every single day. Be conscious of what arises in you. And then listen. As with that dying woman in Montreal, may we all come to a spiritual place where the sacred scripture is a living part of our very being. The Lord is my light. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus himself prays. He listens to what the Father has to say to him. He gave us words with which to pray. And so we come before that same God and Father with the needs of the world and the church. For Pope Francis and the Universal Church, that she will always seek to hear and listen to the urgings of the Holy Spirit in preparation for the World Synod. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For all elected officials, that they may govern with integrity and for the common good, honoring and respecting the dignity and rights of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this parish community that we may pray without becoming weary and support each other so that we remain steady in our pursuit of justice and holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are ill, both physically and mentally, that they may experience the healing power of the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased of our parish, May they forever live in the presence and peace of the resurrected Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all nations, may they work together to address the climate crisis and hear the petitions of those who wish for environmental justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling with their faith, may we as brothers and sisters in Christ be a collective witness and reassure and comfort them on their journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now mention by first name all those who we wish to remember in prayer.
and all those who remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we trust that you hear us. We ask all of our prayers according to your will, through Christ our Lord, who lives with you in the Spirit, our God forever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, pray with me that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant us, O God, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. 
And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great. And you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father, most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowing of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, may this same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, 
the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings a salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Spirit, your death for a life to the world. Holy 
body and blood, free me from my sin. Be faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Next weekend, October 22nd and 23rd, there will be a second collection for World Mission Sunday. World Mission Sunday is a day set aside for Catholics worldwide to recommit themselves to the church's missionary activity through prayer and sacrifice. Please be generous. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.